Hey everyone, it's John again. I'm going to be doing a little video on OSPF and how to configure, or rather how to propagate, a default route. So I've got a few networks set up, as you can see on the, the left hand side we've got the 172.16.1.0 slash 24, up here the 2.0 slash 24, and the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 on the right here. In between we've got these networks and essentially we've got a cloud which is going to represent the internet and eventually have connectivity to the server on the right at 64.100.1.2 so let's just kick off and start configuring right okie doke so the first thing we're going to do is configure OSPF so we'll do router OSPF and what we need to do is have a local process ID this don't need this number of I'm going to choose number one in this time doesn't need to match between routers what does need to match though is the area number and I'll show you what I mean in a wee second so I'll do router OSPF1 now we'll drop into router configuration mode and essentially what we need to do is tell advertise what networks we know so the networks we know about on this router is the 3.0, the 10.4 and the 1.0 networks so let's just do that, we'll do network um, 172.16.1.0 and we've got a mask of 24 with OSPF you need to use wildcard mask which is essentially an inversion of the subnet mask the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0 so inversely the wildcard mask will be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255 and after that we need to specify the area so that'll be 0 .0 0.0.0.255 area oh area 0 that's the first one network we know about the next one we're going to do will be the network 192.168.10.4 and it's a slash 30 mask so the on uh, the wildcard mask essentially will be 0 .0 0.0.0.3 again in area 0 area 0 and we'll do network 172.16 the one I'm doing now is this one here 16.3.0 and again this is a slash 30 mask so that'll be area 0 ok so that's that router done and now we shall do this router. Now again, like I said, the process I the process IDs don't need to match, but for um, adjacencies to happen or neighbour relationships rather to happen in OSPF, you need to be in the same area number for the interfaces to be neighbours. So just to just to demonstrate that, I will do I'll change the process IDs, but I'll keep the area numbers the same. So router OSPF. We'll do number three in this one, network, and we'll start with the right network here, just 192. 192.168.1.0, and the wildcard mask will be 0 .0 0.0.0.255. Now, area number, this has got to match area zero. Network, and we're going to do this one. Now, when I do this one, router one's already advertised in this network. So when I advertise router three back to it, you'll see a neighbor relationship come up. 168.10.4 0 area 0 and 192 that's that just come up there and we'll do network 192.168.10.8 and okay so if you actually do a few commands we did for example say show IP OSPF neighbor We've got a neighbour relationship with 10.5, which essentially is this interface on the 10.4 network. I'll show you that right now. So if I do show IP in brief, you'll see that's that actual address there, the serial 001 on this router. So now I'll go up to router 2 and advertise the networks, which it knows. So enable conf t router OSPF, like I say, I'll change the process ID to, not that it matters. Network, and the networks it knows about is 192.168.10.8. 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.8, 192.168.10.
and the wildcard mask will be dot three area zero. A neighbor relationship with number three, with root three will come up. So let that come up. There you go. And I'll do this network and a neighbor relationship with router one will also come up. One seven two up oh, type correctly. <laughs> one seven two sixteen dot three dot zero and area zero. Let that one come up. There we go. And I'll do the LAN facing interface, which is the 172.16.2.0. So I'll do network 172.16.2.0. And it's a slash 24, so we're going back to the 0.0.0.255 area 0. And we've also got the internet facing uh, network to configure. So that's the 209. Dot one six five dot two hundred dot two two four, and it's a slash twenty seven mask, so that's going to be. Uh, it'll be block size of thirty two, so the wildcard mask will be zero dot zero dot zero dot thirty one, and again it's area zero. So that's that configured. Now, as you can see, we've now got connectivity between the routers. So if I had to ping the uh, the network on the left hand side, which is 172.16.1.2, we now get a reply. Can we ping the web server? Well let's find out. Ping 64.100 oh, 100, what's that address again? 1.2 destination host unreachable. Now why is that? That's essentially because we've advertised this network, the 209.165.200.224, so this, for example, when I go to ping that server, this router is going to look up this address here. This router does not have an address for that, it's got an address for this, the 209.165.200.224 network. For example, if I go into my show IP P, oh, show IP root. Okay, so uh, from OSPF, it's learned this network via that interface exiting the serial 001, but it doesn't have a route out to the general internet. So, what I'm going to do is configure a default route on this face, on this interface here. Essentially what that means is that if you get a packet and you don't have an actual route to it, just send out this interface, out this direction. And from that, we're going to use OSPF to tell each router about that same default route. So for example, when this sends a packet, it'll send it to its default gateway. And when that doesn't have a route to it, it'll send it up to here for the default route going out this way. So we should have connectivity after we do that. So what we need to do is configure the default route on router 2. So let's do that now. Conf T IP route. And we'll do the quad zeros. This essentially is just saying for any matches, go out of this. Any IP address, any mask, and we'll exit serial 010, which is this interface here. So once again, that's just basically saying, for any address we don't know, send out of the serial 010 interface, which is this way here. So let's configure that just now. Okay. Right. So, if we do the show IP route on this router, you'll see we've got, this has popped up now, a static interface, and this we star means a default route. So any network you don't know about, send out this interface. So let's just try that just now from this router. Can we ping the web server? Ping 64.100.1.2. Yep, we've now got connectivity. Now, do we have connectivity down here? We shouldn't. Let's have a look. Still unreachable. That's because this router knows about the default route, but these two don't. They only know about the routers, they only know about the networks that this router is advertising. We're not actually advertised the default route yet. 
So what we're going to do is actually propagate that default root to these two rootors here. So let's go in and we'll do conf t rooter osp. I think the process ID was two, wasn't it? Right. The command here we want is default information originate. So if we do default, uh, oh. that should be that, and let's have a wee look. Okay, now this is from Router 3 now. You'll see, in addition to just learning about this network, we've also got here, which is an external OSPF route, that's what the E2 means, and it's a default route, you can see that from the quad zeros, and it's learned via OSPF, the administrative distance is 110, which is OSPF, and it's exiting on 0001. So, let's have a look. Now can we ping? Should be able to. Let's check. Same one. We've now got a reply. Let's see if that applies for... ping 64.100.1.2. Got a reply there. And up here, do we have it from this PC? Ping 64.100.1.2. Yep, we do. And the last thing I like to do when I do this type of configuration is to put a few passive routes in because essentially we are advertising OSPF uh, routes out of this interface, this interface, and this interface. Now it makes sense to advertise them out of the left and this one here because there's routers on each end to receive those routes. It makes no sense to send routing updates out of here because essentially we've just got a PC and the PC's got a default gateway, it's going to send everything to this router anyway. Likewise with this here, makes no sense to send routing updates out to the LAN facing networks and again up here, out here. So, just before we finish up, let's just tidy this up a little bit and we'll do... conf t router oh, ospf3 and we'll do a passive interface on, actually, do you know what, let's find out the LAN facing interface is first. I'll exit out of that. Um, do show IP and brief. And the LAN facing interface is gigabit zero zero. You can see that by the IP address here. So let's go back into that. Router OSPF 3 passive interface and we'll do gigabit zero zero. Likewise here, um, let's see the IP address, same again the LAN facing is gigabit zero zero. So we'll do conf t router ospf, I think that was one passive interface, gigabit zero zero, configure that, and on router two, Show IP and brief. Now, this one's a little bit different in that we actually don't want to send routing updates out here just because we don't want to advertise our internal network out to the internet. We've got the default route configured, so basically everything we don't know will go out this face anyway, and we don't need to tell everything out here about all our internal network in here. So we'll make both these passive interfaces, the left one and the right, and leave the router connection ones um, still active. So, the interface we want to make passive is the serial 010, which is the default interface, and the LAN face one, which again is gigabit 00. So let's just finish up on that. It's conf t router, nope, <laughs> type OSPF2, and we'll do a passive interface on serial 010, and passive interface on gigabit zero slash zero. Now, this interface has been made passive. Some people seem to make the mistake that this somehow means this interface is somehow unusable. It doesn't. It will still receive updates, it just won't send updates out of this interface. So let's just double check that. Do we still have connectivity? 
Yep, as we do. And that actually saves, that's a bit more efficient configuration of OSPF. So, that's a quick video. I just wanted to do a short one and keep it snappy. Um, the next one I'm probably going to do is, will be on EIGRP or possibly Spanindry. Um, and I'll hope to get them out pretty shortly. So, yep, I'll see you soon. Bye.